Okay, cracking the cider. That was so crisp. ASMR for you fall people out there. We have the Gourd Tree Pumpkin Cider from Trader Joe's today. It's fire. Who else do we have? Who do I have over here on my left? Hi. Hey. We're getting the intro done right away before we forget and get to the end. And we're like, you guys, we forgot to introduce ourselves. I don't think I've ever had an intro in the beginning. It's always at the end. Here's your time to shine. Wow. I'm Lauren. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Alejandra. And I'm Morgan. Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes, you guys. This episode is spooky light edition. And we're hoping that it actually is light. And don't get mad at me because it was apparently already this theme and she's going to do a much scarier one. But I tried to opt out because I I did. I texted her and I was like, I'm sorry, I just can't. I you can't. said you've literally been having nightmares since it was mentioned. It's so, yeah, the past two <laughs> nights, I, I haven't had nightmares. I just like now when I hear something in my room, like a noise, I just get like startled just knowing because the last, I don't know if you listened to the episode that um, me, her and Justin did last year it was at the haunted hotel at the haunted hotel and i slept there that was the scary (laughs) no that was this no i know don't worry like look away from me look away (laughs) but um that was like you see my head i was like (laughs) no no no. cut me cut me oh my god um it was the scariest shit ever and i it took me months like there was this one story about a little boy who there was this ghost who was telling him he needs to keep the closet door open and so the little boy was like no like he needs it and whatever I literally kept my closet door open at night for months after that because I was afraid that if I kept it closed that like shit would happen something bad would like, happen I like got so freaked out by the episode and then staying in the haunted hotel there were so many eerie things that happened when I stayed there and Justin and Morgan left like I slept there Yeah, so (laughs) I was really hesitant about this episode. Yeah, well, this one's coming out end of September. So it's like, I feel like October hits and then it's really like spooky season. But some people are ready for that like light intro, diving into some eerie, creepy, paranormally feeling stuff. So that's that's kind of what we're going with today. So it's spooky light edition. Spooky dark edition will be coming in October um, with someone who can really handle yeah the terrible the dark the scary there you go so it's gonna be a good one there's some really cool stories one of which I like really researched and had to like write my own story it it was a whole thing so I'm really excited to share that but Alejandra has one and she'll be starting what no you don't want to start I need you to set the tone and tenor I'll start Alejandra will go second sure and then we'll pass it back of course. Okay. Sorry, before you guys continue. Yeah. Um, my headphones gave out, but I didn't want to uh, say it. At, they like, gave out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they tapped out. I didn't want to say it at a weird time, but they're, they're, they're not on at all. Oh, no. They're, like, they don't work at all. They said enough is enough. We'll fix that. I've heard okay. enough. Are you, re- are you ready, though, besides that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's dive in. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What if you did like a like a little like twist on the intro song and it was like spookier, like but like with an organ? No, no, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do I need to fucking tighten that? I <laughs> if it can go wrong, it's going wrong. <laughs> no, it's good. It's Are you fine. sure? Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna keep going down like a flaccid dick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a scary noise. That was the, that was the scariest thing all episode. No, just, <laughs> what like how did that just come to your mind? Out of everything you could have say, said going down, just just Crazy. have a dick on your mind right now. <laughs> well, it just seemed like that vibe, you know. <laughs> that no, <laughs> like, like it literally so no. Face. Yeah, like, not at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so for the first one, the first two are going to be kind of short, sweet kind of to get us in there. Mm -hmm. So this is coming from a listener. It is titled, Someone Whispered in My Ear at the Cemetery. I used to live in Connecticut in the area where a lot of the events that the Conjuring movies were based on took place. Ed and Lorraine Warren were even buried 20 minutes from my house. 
I don't know if it's even widely known, but Lorraine Warren intentionally had her and Ed buried in one of the most haunted cemeteries in the area, possibly even the state. While we were bored one day, my mom and I decided to visit the cemetery and look for their headstone. We knew what it looked like, but I didn't know where it was. We walked through the cemetery twice and could not find it, so we gave up and started to leave. My mom was walking in front of me, and as I was walking to the car, something made me stop dead in my tracks. I got chills down my neck, and a wispy voice that sounded like a low whisper said, Look, it's over there. When I looked over, I looked directly at the headstone and said, It's right there, and walked straight to it without missing a beat like I had been there 10 times before. What the fuck? That's some, that's some ghost guiding. Maybe it was Lorraine herself. It's weird vibes. Weird vibes. Haven't you seen um, Teslas driving through cemeteries and like all of a sudden it'll see a person <laughs> next to it? No. The way Morgan's like, so haven't you seen? Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah. It went super viral. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. And there was like even like a horse that showed up in one of the cemetery videos. Wait, hold on. The Tesla did what? Essentially, people would take their Teslas and drive through cemeteries. Why? For fun. What? I don't know. And as the Tesla was, would be driving through the cemetery, all of a sudden, like, people would pop up, like, little things on the Tesla map. And usually it does that if you're driving on the street and someone's walking on the sidewalk. It'll tell you, like, oh, there's a person oh. or a person crossing the street in front of you. It'll tell you that on the Tesla no. map. So they're driving through the cemeteries and all of a sudden people keep popping up and then disappearing and popping up and disappearing. And, like, they're in a cemetery. They're videoing. No. And, like, no one's there. That's spooky. That's insane. That's a spooky story. How much would it take you guys to sleep in a cemetery? A lot of money. I think I'd do it for a thousand bucks. I would have to be like way more than that. Like what's your number? My The first thing I thought was a million. Really? Yeah. But then when I think about it, if someone would be cheap. like, I'm going to give you $50,000 to go sleep in the cemetery, I also feel like I wouldn't say no. You know, yeah. I mean, you slept mm -hmm. in the haunted hotel in Riverside. Like, you'd be fine in a cemetery. And I learned from that experience. <laughs> <laughs> I learned the hard way. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Up next. So this is coming from r slash paranormal. It is 18 days old. It is titled, My Hospice Patient That Showed Me Her Spirit Before and After Her Death. I was a hospice RN for 17 years and had so many spiritual experiences. One incident, I was working in the hospice inpatient unit where we had 10 beds for the patients. I had one woman who was actively dying. As I passed by her room, I peeped in and saw her sitting on the side of her bed smiling. I walked on by, then stopped, recalling, she's not been doing so well. Also, she was missing a leg, and when I just saw her a few seconds prior, she had both legs. I backed up and looked in the room, and she was still laying in bed. I thought maybe I had seen her soul getting ready to leave the body. She looked so happy. Hmm. After the end of my shift, I went home. When I walked in my house, there she was, standing in my hallway. She had both legs, looked at least half her age, and was smiling so brightly. I stood there, smiled at her, thanked her for giving me a visit, then she faded away. Whoa. I called work and told them to go in and check on her. The nurse came back to the phone and confirmed she had passed. I felt so blessed she chose to touch in and share her joy passing on. Mm, that's crazy. Full chills. I love that. Um, this user actually like shared a YouTube video of them telling this event too. Um, they started a YouTube channel. I'll be cooking and sharing spirit stories from my life. Wait, so this person sees spirits often? I, it sounds like it. I mean, they were a hospice nurse for quite some time. Um, the channel is called Uncle Dave's Kitchen. Ooh. Yeah. That's so interesting. I mean, a mat, like to see a casual ghost like that. I mean, I, I would think my mind's playing tr tricks on me. Do you know? I, mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine that. But like, how beautiful is that? Like, that's yeah. like probably one of the happier ones I mm -hmm. think we've we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I really like it. I I like having stories like this that are refreshing, mm -hmm. that make death feel like happier mm -hmm. and like not so scary. Yeah, because like I think about that, I think about death way way too much, like all the time. 
I'm like, what if I drive today and I'm just gone? I was like, I don't have a will yet. I need to do that. I like, I just have so much on my list that I need to get done. And I'm like, it, you could just blink. It could be something stupid. Piano could fall on you. <laughs> Air conditioner out a window. Dead splat. Ow. Like, so to be like, oh, well, it's not so bad. Like, at least yeah. I go like happy ghost out after. Yeah. I don't know. Like Casper, the friendly ghost. Casper. Well, we do have one ghost that's not so happy. I think you can handle it though, Lauren. It's okay. So this next one is also from r slash paranormal. It is 23 days old. It is titled, My Dad is a Ghost, Literally. So my dad died suddenly three years ago. His dog viciously killed him. What? His own dog? Yeah. He had the dog since he was a puppy. They slept together every night. Oh. His girlfriend and him got into an argument and the dog turned on him <gasps> and bit his ear off. Oh. I'll spare you all the details, but the dog basically ate half of my dad. The police shot the dog when they found it attacked. You're like actually fucking with us on this one. <laughs> this is a real post. The police shot the dog when they found it attacking his dead body in the garage. Well, where was the, was the girlfriend just ran away? Like, where was she at? No mention. We're fixing the house up to get it rented out. And the electrician swore he saw a ghost in the garage. And he had no knowledge that someone died there. His voice was shaky when he told me. So I guess my dad is a ghost. Any help here? Can he see me? Is he stuck? What is happening? Also, my dad came home from the hospital to that house. It was my grandparents, and he lived in it after they died. He loves that house and was deeply attached to it. I'm traumatized. Yeah, same. I've I'm never speechless. heard of that ever happening. A dog? Attacking their own owner. Yeah. Like that. I believe. Especially from having... Right, from puppy. Yeah, you'd think that... I know I know. there's sometimes like the, the weaker one. Perhaps maybe the dog just has the instinct to help the, the smaller female. Let's say it was the female was yeah. smaller. But usually the first instinct is to protect the owner, especially the one who's fed you and raised you since you were a baby. So that's just so wild. Yeah, I think it's actually very common. I saw a TikTok the other day that Wait, was like- very common? There, well, especially if you die in the house. So if you're at home with your pets and you just die, yeah. your pets will eat you. That's completely different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's very well, <laughs> so, it's so different. Yeah. This other this other point, <laughs> this other point that I was gonna bring up though, um, the first ever face transplant was a, a woman and it was because her dog mauled her. Just ate her face. That's crazy. When was that? Uh 2005. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. So she lived and they had to transplant her face. Mm -hmm. She had a face transplant. And what now there's been many face transplants since. The dog that mauled the lady was a Labrador Retriever crossbreed. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But her face transplant was really successful. I, I don't think you could handle the pictures. Lauren. Was she in like a, is, was like a new face or they do a bunch of surgery. What, what does that entail? I think it depends. I have seen a face transplant that was full, like top of hairline all the way down the neck. Like I've seen that transplant I watched a video on. Um, it looks like hers was a partial. So it was like from her nose to her mouth and like kind of her lower lips. Would you like to see a picture? Uh, it's like, I no, I don't I'm, think I can I'm handle curious, that. I'm curious, but I just don't know if I, I can. It's one of those things, you know? Would you want to see an after picture? Yes, I'll do an after. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know that was an option. Thank you. <laughs> this is an after face transplant. Okay. Normal. Looks good. Yeah. You're kind of curious about the before now? Don't, don't do that to me. No, I'm not curious. No, I'm not curious. I can't. Yeah. For those I know, but I already know that she's going to post it on Instagram and I'm probably going to see it. Can you even do that actually? I can. Okay. It'll be in the swipe feature. Yeah. So um, remind so, me not to swipe that one. Yeah. Don't don't swipe. Trigger warning. Face transplant. But I think that's like, I don't know. An animals, like, it's actually crazy we've domesticated animals. Do you ever think about that? But it's been over thousands of years. So. But have you seen all the people trying to, like, domesticate weird stuff right now? No. 
No, give us an example. Mm -hmm. Um, coyotes. That's not weird. But they're wild. People are trying so to make them dogs. pets. Dogs are wild. But that's been thousands of years. Like this is like people just trying to rapid fire it. Raccoons. Gotta start somewhere. They're trying to potty train <laughs> raccoons. Fair. I would I would potty train a raccoon. <laughs> Apparently, they're really hard to potty train. I've always wanted one. <laughs> I've always wanted one. Word on the street, raccoons are hard to potty. Yeah. <laughs> I've done so much research, you guys. My first raccoon experience was when I was like seven years old. Mm -hmm. I love them. I they're, they're like so cute. They're, they are cute. They're so cute. They're hairless they're when they're jazz born. Hands. They're hands. They're so cute. I just love the way they roll. They're like little roly polies. Little roly polies. Yeah. Okay, so this next story is one that I put together based on a couple of YouTube videos I found. One being from a guy named Joe Scott. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description as well as his video that I, I kind of took some of this information from, as well as additional sources I took information from, which is Affinity Explorers and inf.news. I did a lot of research. I like literally fully typed out this story for probably an hour and a half today. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, it is a really cool story about one of like a very well-known documented time traveler. So here we go. In April of 2006 in Kiev, Ukraine, police were called to deal with a confused man who had been reported to be wandering around the city aimlessly. When two police responded to the disturbance, they found the man to appear scared and unsure of where he really was. He said his name was Sergei Ponomarenko, and he claimed that he had left his house earlier that day to take some photos. And while photographing, he suddenly found himself here in what appeared to be the future. He certainly looked the part, carrying an old-fashioned camera and a dated outfit. When police asked for his identification, he handed over a Soviet identification document from the 1950s. The document showed he was 25 years old, and when police began inspecting it, they found that it appeared to be a legitimate document from the time of the Soviet Union, more than 50 years old. When asked what day he thought it was, Sergei said April 23rd, 1958. The year was actually 2006. April 23rd, 2006. So same day, different year. Wait, so he was just taking pictures and that's like his origin story? Yeah. The cops treated him like he was insane. He was arrested and taken to a psychiatric hospital in Kiev. There, Dr. Pablo Kucherkov began questioning Sergei. This is a transcript from the consultation of April 26, 2006. It was recorded. Dr. Kucherkov, how about you tell me something about yourself? Ponomarenko. My name is Sergei Ponomarenko. I was born in the city of Kiev on June 16, 1932. A Gemini. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kucherkov, yes, but I would assure you that you are not older than 30 years old. Ponomarenko, I am 25 years old. The doctor asked Sergei how it was that he appeared in the year 2006, and then Sergei told him about how he was trying to take a picture of a UFO and somehow teleported to this place. Dr. Kucherkov, but can you remember how you appeared in our time? Ponomarenko, it was daytime, and I wanted to go for a walk in the city. I took my camera, but when I left my house, I saw a strange object that had a bell shape, and it was very strange, and it was flying in a strange way. It is difficult to explain what I was seeing. It might be better to look at the photos from my camera, and then maybe we can answer. Dr. Kuchikov was curious and decided to try and develop the photos on Sergei's camera. I want to know what kind of camera it was. But there was a difficulty. The techniques of development for old cameras like that of Sergei's weren't readily available and very difficult to come by. The camera Sergei was discovered with was a Yashima Flex and considered an antique at the time. Wow. So they had to look for an expert in photography, and they found Vadim Poisner. Poisner was surprised when he reviewed the role Sergei had and discovered that based on the reel's info, Sergei's specific role was made in 1956. Additionally, this type of roll had not been manufactured since the 70s. It is impossible to explain how that roll could be preserved in such good condition for more than half a century. Wow. Poisoner did manage to reveal all the photographs on the roll, and this is where things got really strange. Many of these images showed the city of Kiev in the 1950s, 
From the cars to the clothes, everything was historically accurate. Some of the buildings didn't even exist anymore. The camera also had photos of a woman about 25 years old, a photo of Sergei in front of some buildings that no longer existed, and an image with Sergei Ponomarenko and this woman together, where Sergei is in the very same outfit he was wearing on the day he was found by police. Here are the pictures. No way. Okay, this, this is the woman on the left, and that's Sergei and the woman on the right. These aren't s- scary. <laughs> I can handle these ones. Okay, this is also, don't scroll past this, but this is also an old picture of, like, Keith. That was okay. on his camera? Yeah, this was also on his like, good photos. Yeah, pretty good. The photograph that caught the most attention, though, was one of a UFO appearing in the shape of a bell above a building in Kiev, exactly as described by Sergei during his initial psychiatric evaluation. That's the picture of the UFO. Whoa. Okay, can I ask, though, how did they have the term UFO in that year? How did Sergei— This was 2006. Yeah, but how did Sergei— he, Didn't he say I was trying to take a picture of a UFO? I think they, like— I'm not sure. We can Google the history yeah. of the what word. What does UFO stand for again? Unidentified oh, that's right. flying object. Okay. I guess maybe I that like, was I a, think that did go back pretty far. Can you look that up? I just like, I don't know. It just feels like so like. When were planes invented? Because was this before or after that? The right. When did. The first plane was invented in 1903. So UFOs were definitely a okay. thing. Okay. This was around 58. Wait, but why would UFOs definitely be a thing? Because, like, p- things are flying. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean they had the term for it. I think it did go back pretty far, though. In the 1940s and 50s, reports of flying saucers became a cultural phenomenon. Okay. So that existed. And it was in the 1950s, this article, correct? Yeah, it was 53. Or okay. 58 50s, is when 58. he um, transported. Yeah, they started calling them flying saucers. Flying. They s- <laughs> <laughs> Why do we laugh at things I like that? I don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> Yeah. Walking. <laughs> they started calling them flying saucers around uh, 40s. So this was 10 years later. All right. so. All right. I wasn't trying to be a stickler. I just like I'm trying to understand really because this is such a phenomenal story. Yeah, this is, yeah. I you know? love it. I'm just like, yeah, I love it. I'm so I'm not excited like, now. Like a, I'm not a, like a doubter. I'm, I'm a truther. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. really do. I'm buying in, but I'm just more curious because I hear the word UFO and I'm like, I think it's because there's all this current alien talk. Yeah, they just released like a documentary. The fact that they're, they're actually real. Oh, I don't follow that. Well, we'll get into it once we uh, right. finish this out. So, this is a transcript from a subsequent session between Dr. Kuchikov and Sergey after the photos were developed. Kuchikov, here are the photos revealed. They are from your camera. I'm especially interested in this photograph. Take a look, please. Ponomarenko, now are you convinced that I am telling the truth? I so far do not understand what this object is and how something like that happened to me. At the same moment that I took the picture, I went down to look at the camera and somehow I showed up in this year. Dr. Kuchikov did start to hypothesize that if this was some sort of alien spacecraft, it theoretically could have flown Sergei across the universe at the speed of light. Now, this is science that goes above my head, And it does include Einstein's theory of relativity and time dilation. But for the sake of the story, let's pretend we all get it. I don't. I tried to research all of the articles on time dilation. And this is where Justin would have been useful. Mm -hmm. I barely passed astronomy. This would have been so useful. Yeah. So like a lot, there's a lot of breakdowns, like even modern day articles right now that say like time travel is possible, like based on these theories. After speaking with Dr. Kuchikov, Sergei went to his room. The clinic's security camera captured the moment when he entered the room, but Sergei was never seen leaving his room. He had just vanished. The only way out was watched constantly. The windows in the room even had bars on them. It was impossible to escape, and yet he was gone. The mystery took another crazy turn when authorities looked back into the records and found a man by the same name who went missing in 1958. Mm. They tracked down the man's girlfriend, who by that time was in her 70s. It turns out that the girlfriend was the woman in the photographs with Sergey the day he went missing. Mm. Oh my God. I have like chills. I want to cry, but like, I don't know if it's happy or sad tears. I just, wow. 
She then told authorities that Ponomarenko had disappeared that day in 1958 and then reappeared two days later, the same amount of time he had actually been in 2006. Mm. She went on to claim he disappeared again in the 70s, but this time did not come back. But years later, she ended up getting a photograph in the mail showing Sergei as an older man with a note on the back of the picture claiming it's from 2050. He appears to be in Kiev, only with the skyline changed with the addition of skyscrapers. The note also said that he would be back soon, but that never happened. How can you go to 2050? <sighs> He's a time traveler. I know, but like, <laughs> be, like th- <laughs> we're like the people in 58. Wh- wait, sorry. Yeah, we're, we're like we're like the people in 58 where like if we got like a postcard from 2006, we'd be like, what? I know, I know. That's what's messing with me so much because like I can- We can perceive 58 in 2006 because it's already happened. Yeah. We can't perceive 2050 because right. it hasn't. Well, and it's also something with that the fact where like, like him going back in time is what really confuses me, but him traveling like at the speed of light fast forward, then I'm like, okay, the timeline is still going, but going back as if they're all happening at the same time- well, and this is the picture of him in Kiev in 2050. That's 2050? That's what was on the back of the picture that he sent to his girlfriend. It's a sick jacket. I like yeah. this, I like this swag so, in 2050. This I've never heard of any I've never heard of any reality behind time traveling. I, I also haven't looked into it, but I love I love movies that have to do with tra- time traveling. So yeah. I'm just like mind fucked right now. That's crazy. Okay, so... <laughs> what? What? Is this a lie? It's a lie. Morgan, are you fucking me? It is. I fucking knew it. Morgan! <laughs> I fucking knew it. Do you it. know how hard it was to keep a straight face during all of this? I had a feeling. So this is a very, very, very well-known internet time traveler story, uh, and it has recently been debunked. You've hurt my feelings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, hurt, I'm hurt too. Thanks to YouTuber Joe Scott, which again, be sure to check out his video. Um, Joe tells this story absolutely incredibly. Like I, I did take a lot of notes from him and the other websites I mentioned that will be linked, but Justin pulled up his YouTube video for me and I'm watching it. I was fully bought in. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Holy shit. Because there's these pictures, right? There's a picture of his girlfriend that I didn't show you of her in her 70s showing the picture that I showed you of him in 2050. I literally got done. I go, that was absolutely incredible. To me, it was the transcripts from Mm -hmm. uh, authorities. So that's what I'm like, if they have like from the authority. Oh, there's video. There's video footage of him walking into his his room. So Joe Scott actually does debunk this. Like, so where the fuck does this shit come from? At one point, this was like a story that was sold as being real. Yes, everyone believed this. And people believed it. Yeah, there's an article on this that it literally says like, the story that almost made people believe in time traveling. Like, they Uh, almost pulled a fast one on us. And so Joe does dive in and he comes up with an explanation. Um, He finds that like, the picture of him in 2050 has been cloned and possibly includes the Empire State Building, a little modified. So they think it's some Photoshop. And then he goes more compellingly, Joe also found that the photos were taken from the Ukrainian TV show Aliens. <laughs> the show discusses the possibility of extraterrestrial life and is similar to the show type you could see on the History Channel. But according to Scott, has a number of inaccuracies. So Man. this show was trying to portray this as very real. Like yeah. it's literally a documentary. Yeah. And they wow. literally call it like the time traveler. That's and insane. they they share all this. Was I fucking your vibe because I was so fixated on UFO? UFO? Did no, I love like, poke a hole in the story? No, but I didn't make any of that up. No, like, I know you didn't. But when you were trying to look up UFO, they called them flying saucers. No, I honestly figured that UFO was a term that in all of the articles I read, they had kind of translated it Uh, because maybe he didn't have the words for it. mm -hmm. So I was kind of figuring like, well, I don't know, like these, this is now kind of traveled through the grapevine. Yeah. Maybe. You only started losing me with the, the, um, 2050. 2050. And then with the picture from him from 2050, I was like, that looks like he's still back in the fifties. Yeah. But fashion, (laughs) fashion comes around, baby. That's so it's crazy. When I saw saw that photo, I was like that, does not like to your yeah, point I was right. like, that looks like old fashioned yeah. but then I was like wait no fashion does come around but even so the photo well and here's a picture itself, well this is a picture that, 
That's a picture fur. of quality would be amazing. And yeah, like, but Lauren, right now it's the- trending to make photos look vintage. Like people are literally filtering and editing their photos but to if, look vintage. I know, but if he wanted to convince his, you know, girlfriend that he was in, what, 2050? Like, don't you think he would be like, here's the most up-to-date version? Like, yeah, but like maybe the photos like come with that kind of filter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, who knows? Maybe there's like a World War Three, and like we revert back. Like, oh, you also, never know. Speak- but that's the picture of his um, Soviet Ident- Union card. identification wow. card. Wow. Also, um, I don't know if you guys ever learned this or remember this, but um, in one of my journalism classes, there was something that happened too that reminded me of this because you said so many people believe this that they started believing in time travel. But um, basically, there was a, I know you guys will know this, but the, uh, there was a radio station that started uh, doing a radio act of a movie, which was like World War Three or something. And so, um, Normally, they just have the radio talk about, like, here's the weather, blah, 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 whatever. And so in the beginning, they go, hey, this is KS95, whatever it is. We are going to be doing a reading from the play or movie World War Three, And I'm, I'm not getting this correct, by the way. Uh, this I'm just, I can't remember. I'm making it up. Um, but basically, all these people would tune in because you know how radios work. You just tune in whenever you want to tune in. And they're like, take cover. We're being bombed. You need to get in your basement. So people, like people like died because they literally like were like jumping out of their windows, like because people were so afraid. Oh my God. And so there ended up being this like um, law or like act that like went into place with radio that like you, like, you can't just do that because mm-hmm. it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's not kosher. It was yeah it was that's crazy. so crazy that's I was insane just, actually. I was just on a road trip with some friends and we were playing like a song where there's like a police siren and we were all like and we're like that shouldn't be legal like you shouldn't <laughs> be able to that. put out songs that have police sirens or like yeah things like of that nature because it does scare you when you're yeah. it's like jarring when you're right. driving like it's really bad similar, it's yeah. like why that shouldn't be able to be broadcasted in the vehicle Mm-mm. I do not like that okay no, oh wait so also where did was there where did this come from by the way like this was just this guy was a real guy and they just decided to play a prank or like how did that um you know i'm not sure about that that's a question you're gonna have to go over to joe scott's youtube video he does break it down further of the origins but i think the alien show is where it really came from and people thought it was like a history channel like documentary yeah and they took it at that face face value value. Yeah. yeah people i mean Myself included sometimes, but people can be really, gu- I'm actually pretty gullible, but like pe- society as a whole can be very gullible. It's especially if there's a lot of buy-in, people are more inclined to buy into something if mm-hmm. it's like widely accepted and people don't question it. So I'm not super shocked by that, but you know, like, for, I, I don't know, we were like kind of believing it. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, I saw Lauren's face. She was fully yeah. bought in. Yeah. I was bought in too. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was fully convinced when I watched the video for the first time. Yeah. I was like, this the, is real. 100%. The, only, the only part that made me not just like the end with the, you know, him traveling again to the future is the fact that I hadn't heard that before. Because I would think if there's a story, because I've, like I said, I was like, I haven't done research on time travel, but... This is crazy. Yeah. I, and so that was the thing that was throwing me off is like, how have I not heard this story before? Because this is a phenomenon. Like, yeah. this is absolutely like mind blowing. So that was my only part that was making me question. But it's actually funny because before, so we were recording right before you got here, obviously, but they don't know. So, um, and I even mentioned to Morgan, I was just like, I am, I am with a lot of these type of topics, I am not a believer. But I'm also not not a believer. I'm the same way. Like, I can, I'm the same way. Yeah. Especially with aliens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's, yeah. That's what I don't I know what bucket I fall yeah. into. Like, mm-hmm. I haven't I could done, believe either way. Totally. Yeah. You I could have, convince me of either one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I have not. I was just going to say, like, I have not done enough research into mm-hmm. what's going on with the aliens. I know there's a lot of talk around it. So I don't know what I believe. Yeah. I could totally go either way. I just need, like, a compelling right. story. 
Well, and it's like, because there's still so, we're such a young species in terms of the history of the world. Yeah. So I just think about how, you know, like a few hundred years ago or so, people probably would be like, there's no chance that you could get an object that big up in the air. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like planes, <laughs> the right brothers, yeah. the right wings. The right wings. <laughs> um, but it's like, so it's, I don't ever want to just be completely convinced that uh-huh. I know something because there's still so much to learn and figure yeah, out yeah. Well, far beyond me living on this earth. So. Yeah, like our current understanding maybe doesn't even allow us to comprehend or fathom right. a reality where that can exist. Yeah, exactly. And that's where people start to trip up. Like, yeah. it's like, But yeah, that's it's so interesting to me. What? Okay, sorry, back to that story though. One time, I can't remember when this happened and it kind of feels like a fever dream. My grandpa passed away in 2015. 15. So it's been some time now. But since then, I was walking, and this was actually in LA. And this wasn't that long ago. I want to say a year or two ago. I was walking, and I'm not kidding you. I passed this man who looked just like my grandpa. That was probably him. And I wanted to stop so badly and ask him, like, who are you? But that's like so creepy. But I I literally double took, and it was like, I'm like, do people like get reincarnated? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He looked a little bit younger, but I was like, oh my God, that looks just like my grandpa. That is something I could easily believe in because of the stories that I've seen. I'm sure. And again, like, things could be fabricated, but like, I feel like I've seen a lot of situations where there's like little children who like know something about somebody from years ago that had passed away and it's just like, how do you explain that? And again, people could be lying just like the story. But like, if those stories are true, mm-hmm. how do you explain a young child like explaining exactly a woman who had died, you yeah. know, 10 years ago or so? It, it, that's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It is absolutely wild. I I fully believe in this stuff. So I I think it probably was your grandpa. It was like a... A manifestation like I I think that kind of stuff can exist yeah and it's crazy because it was so random so it's not like oh I was looking for it or anything like that because mm-hmm. if you look hard enough you can kind of like make things work but it was so random it was like in LA I remember we were crossing the street we cross each other and I really wanted to like go up to him and say something but I didn't know how that well, could come across you know, and it's the first and only time I've seen wow. somebody mm-hmm. who looked like someone I know who has passed. Do you regret not saying something? Yeah. I really wish I had stopped, but I just don't even know what I could have said. Hi. Like, this is going to sound really weird, but you look like my grandpa. Like, it. Do I do regret. I do regret it. If it happened again, I would for sure. I mean, I won't get into it now, but I think I've talked about it on this podcast. Like, and I've had people message me being like, you have some type of proximity with people who have crossed over to the other side because I've had so many dreams with visits, visitation dreams. I have so many. And I've had like, I've Mm -hmm. had communication with people that I know have passed over, which is really beautiful. It's not scary at all. Mm -hmm. And I'll spare all the details. But so that is something that would happen to me. Like I would be the one who sees somebody who is like crossed Mm -hmm. because it's just, I've had such powerful connections in that way, mostly in my dreams. I think they're real, which speaking of this next story kind of goes with that. This is six months old coming from r slash paranormal. It is titled what we believe was our daughter's paranormal moment as a toddler. From the time our daughter was just about a year to just over two years old, we periodically got woken up to the sounds of her giggling to flat out cackling and squealing in excitement. When either of us would get up to see what the fuss was about, she'd be standing or sitting at any of the three sides of her crib looking up. One day I was holding her and walking from each framed photo of family members. I'd point to those in the pics and say, who is that? I pointed to her mom, myself, my mom, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother, his wife. Each time she'd say her word for that person. There was a collage with a number of people Memories of the past my wife and I made and framed. There were people and friends who were no longer with us slash passed on, including my father, who'd passed away a decade before our daughter was born. I started pointing at people, and if she didn't know them, she'd look at me real fast and hold the palms of her hands up like, I don't know. So I'd point to the person again and say their names. She'd do her best to repeat it. In the collage was a pic of my late father and I. I pointed to me. 
She said, Dada. I pointed to my father, and she got all excited. She started bending her knees in my arms, raising up and down, giggling with the biggest smile. She raised her arms up in the air and looked at the ceiling and said loudly, Papa, 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 Papa. She kept giggling and saying, Papa. I had chills, and my wife was looking at us with wide eyes. I started to tear up. For one, no one had ever shown her a photo of my father. We didn't have one hanging up in the rooms where she frequented. No reason. We just didn't have very many big photos of him. For two, she'd never said the word before. Not ever. Lastly, my brother lives halfway across the country, and at that time, he had only seen my daughter once. He has one daughter, but she was in college when we visited him, so she'd never met our daughter. But my niece spent a lot of time of her early life around my late father before my brother relocated. Papa was what my niece called my father, and he loved being called Papa. Her reaction had my wife and I thinking and admittedly hoping that maybe, just maybe, all those times we had woken up to our daughter giggling. Why am I going to cry? I know. Bug! Giggling, laughing, and squealing in delight. It was my late father paying her a visit. A hundred percent it was. It was just so cute. It was a hundred percent him. Ugh. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so crazy. Wait, why I'm are just you like, crazy? I'm just like, I'm just like sitting here crying over this ghost story. No, I, I, got, I was starting to tear yeah. up throughout the entire thing. It's just beautiful. Yeah. You had to hold it together and suppress all your emotions, <sighs> so now you're releasing them. It's yeah. totally fine. I know. <laughs> there is a comment from OP because someone goes, it's common for children to be more perceptive yeah. of spiritual presences I've than adults. That. Unless this became an issue or you're suspecting the presence may be a demon in disguise, mm-hmm. Demons do disguise themselves as relatives or friends who have passed. The fuck don't ever tell me that. It doesn't sound like you it feel is, though, based on this story. Then try to comfort your kid, then worrying too much as it won't really hurt your kid. No, it's so harmless. It happened over 20 years ago. Daughter is now 22. Yeah. Um, but Opie responds and goes, I told my wife that I put this story on Reddit. She brought up a memory I forgot. We had a dog before we had our daughter I and still it. had him for a few years after our daughter was born. He used to wake us up by playing in the corner of the living room where an old recliner used to be. He'd wake my wife up barking before our daughter was born. It'd take a train coming through our living room to wake me up. (laughs) The recliner was the chair my father used when he came and visited twice a week each before his untimely death. Oh, dogs and kids. Oh my God. Animals know. They do. Dogs and kids. It's crazy. I think you're just more like, you're more open to things Mm -hmm. you're not a skeptic you're kind of like untainted pure innocent little soul for sure so i think like good and bad you see it you feel it yeah you're willing to like suspend disbelief and like like you you said it really well you're just less closed off Mm -hmm. to things that seem paranormal and Mm -hmm. phenomenal and just like not believable yeah like i had my old house that one of the houses that i grew up in in minnesota definitely had some paranormal activity Oh, God, I remember you guys told me that when I came over to your house and we were all in the basement. Uh And it's when you were were moving to Los Angeles, so we were all saying goodbye to you. And I was so scared. And, like, you guys were all just, they were all, like, sharing stories about, like, random things that had happened. And I... I was yeah. not ready for it because we were sitting in the basement and you said the basement is where the, the shit basement happened. was yeah. yeah so I'll Ooh. make a long story short but no. in the basement we had a dog the dog would go downstairs and just start the dog never really barked it would go downstairs and bark at nothing nope and then for Nanda my little sister who at the time was really young like a baby my mom one time was like go downstairs because her playroom was down there my mom was like go downstairs and clean up for Nanda was one of the most even keeled not temperamental children she came running up the stairs, bawling, saying, "Someone's down there. I can't do it. I, oh I keep seeing him." And yeah, my, I fully believe she it. was like not a liar. Like she was just not a kid who did that. Oh my god! And so my mom was like that, coupled with the dog that would just bark, and there yeah. were all these other weird things that happened down there. I know. I remember you telling me something about this house. Oh, there were so many things that happened in that. Wasn't house. this like a divorce, did you guys- like basement? Yeah, like every person that would go down there, and like no. that was their office or no, something. No, no, no. When we were touring the house, when my mom. And my, at the time, stepdad, before they got divorced, when they bought the house, the basement wasn't finished. 
So in Minnesota, people have basements. That's not super common in California and no. some other places, but in Minnesota, it's common. Sometimes they're finished. Sometimes they're unfinished. Mine was unfinished when I was growing up. My it's entire scary. house. It scared the shit out of me. Uh-huh. You guys, honestly, I want to say it's the scariest basement I've ever seen. I <laughs> because an unfinished basement and we barely like we didn't have a lot of lights down there either oh yeah. god don't even and get then, me started on mine at the farm yeah there's a potato cellar unfinished basements yeah. are what you see in scary stories yeah, yeah. Mo- scary yeah. movies it's, where they like oh, do all the bad stuff Terrible. if I had to and then the only time we'd really go down there was because we had like storage so mm-hmm. it'd be to like go and get something like yeah. we wouldn't hang yeah. out down there and it was a huge basement you guys it was so big like my mom always they, they always planned to finish it because they build the house and then my parents got divorced so that never happened so it was a huge basement and it just had it was so scary to me i would run for my fucking life when i would be coming up those stairs whenever i needed to go get something because Mm -hmm. it was dark it was scary like it had all that like glass foam around the windows you Mm -hmm. know what i'm talking about and like the only time we'd go that down there was to get something for storage or because there was a tornado warning yeah and we'd have like a little radio and we'd listen to the radio and we'd all stay really close together and we'd like see through the windows like the sky turning some crazy green bad vibes Whew, yeah. yeah, the basements okay. were fucked. Divorce basement, though. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so when they were touring the house, the basement was unfinished. But, like, when they went down there, there was, like, a mattress down there. And so it was evident that someone had been sleeping there. What? So my mom, like, heard – she deduced, like, oh, because when they were selling the house, they were – the realtor was, like, they're getting divorced. Uh, and my mom was, like, why is this house on the market? Like, mm-hmm. they're getting a divorce. And, oh, there was a mattress down there and there was, like, a little rack of clothes. And it was obviously the men's clothes. Mm. So my, it was evident that the wife had started making her husband sleep down there, which is okay. so, so cruel. But anyway, um, so he was sleeping on this mattress. It was, like, bad energy, bad vibes. You don't know what he did. Yeah, true, 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 <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so she, my mom, whatever, that's, like, a, just a little data point to remember. So then my par- my mom and my stepdad bought the house, finished the basement, my stepdad is was and is a workaholic. He's an architect. And his the basement became like part like entertainment playroom, part like office. And he would spend literally all of his time down there working, 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 working. Yeah. And I mean, without going too much into my family's business, like my my mom and my stepdad ended up getting a divorce. Part of the big reason behind that was because he just like constantly worked. And my mom just was like, I can't do this. Like I'm married to somebody who's married to their job. Mm-hmm. I feel like I don't have a husband. And so my mom started to really resent the basement because he'd be like, I'll be up in a second. She'd be like, I have our show ready. And then he like would never come up from the oh basement. My gosh. He was a slave to the basement. But like maybe there was an energy down there. That's what we're saying. So like oh. my mom felt like that basement like had, had this, him captive, had this negative energy because of the last person who lived there who clearly like was like, for lack of better words, like a slave to the basement because he slept down there, lived down there, oh my God. was rejected by his wife. And then that's some weird the divorce shit. happened to get, it's like, it's like a tainted yeah. house. And then my stepdad was like literally married to the basement. And that was the same, same house. basement that, yeah. okay. And then all this weird energy would happen. We'd hear like Do you know the history? It was the house, like, do you know any history of the house before? There's no like mm-hmm. negative. I wonder if anyone else after they moved in there has gotten divorced i don't know there was if there's a family that moved in i don't know if they still live there we should go look i know there were so many weird things that happened in that house like there were i had my lucid dreams in that house that's crazy yeah it was really bad energy in that house we ended up obviously selling it but before that my mom and i were like we need to have this house like cleansed cleansed everyone should cleanse their house but just make sure you buy your sage from a Native American indigenous shop because sage is like very exploited right now and like mm. not you got to buy from an ethical source. I didn't know that. Okay, Ale, are you ready for yours? Yeah, you, I don't know. You got this. Thanks. Woo, 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 woo. Am I reading it on your heavy ass brick computer? Yeah, we'll pass her over. Pass it down. This thing's like heavier than take one down. Wow, pass it a around. Newborn. Yeah, wow. Right? That has to be. <laughs> There's no way babies weigh this much. This this onesie makes me look like I have a ben-im, ben-im, something ben-im. like a what? A dick. She loves She's it. really on the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do you need to be dicked down? I know Justin's been gone for like twenty four hours, but like it's been, it's been too relax. long. It's been too long, you guys. Oh, don't don't get me started. Okay, <laughs> don't don't start with me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you've probably had sex more recently than me. Literally no chance. 
All right. So this is titled, this was posted eight days ago and it was posted by just, just me three, 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 three. Let me try that again. I guess she always does do that. <laughs> I've never done that. This. Okay, sorry. Okay, this was posted by Just Just Me 333. Three, three. <laughs> the first one was good enough. <laughs> it's like all the threes. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. And this is on, I think it's, yeah, r slash let's not me is the subreddit. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up in a small town. Total population was maybe 2,000. Everyone knew everyone else or at least knew your family members. It was a safe town with mostly middle-class working families. Nothing major ever happened, and the crime rates were low. I grew up feeling safe and secure. To note, I grew up in the 90s. 90s Hey. Okay. One summer day, (laughs) people listening to this are like, whoa, (laughs) damn. (laughs) You're old. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. One summer day, my good friend Jenny and I were out for a bike ride. We were 11 or 12 years old. We were allowed to bike anywhere we wanted as long as we didn't leave our town and we wore our helmets. There was a new road being constructed in between the two main neighborhoods. The new road was to provide a shorter way of accessing the main road to get to the next town. At the time, the road was still under construction but was nearly complete. All that was left was paving and painting. Jenny and I decided to bike down the gravel road. At the halfway point, we noticed a man walking. He was very early 30s and very handsome. He was just 30s, not very. <laughs> he was early 30s and very handsome. <laughs> what? Okay. I didn't recognize him and Jenny didn't either. It's just the way this is written. <laughs> it's the way this is written. I swear it's the way this is written. Okay. I didn't recognize him and Jenny didn't either. As we got closer, he broke out in a big smile and said, Hello. We said hello back as he didn't seem threatening or scary. He asked us if we were having a good summer and we said yes. He told Jenny and I that he was a photographer from a nearby city and was in town to scout out models for his new postcard company. He said Jenny and I had beautiful features. He said everything in a very flattering way that made us feel special. He said we could be models. So we asked if he could take our pictures. He said that we had this look that he wanted and the scenery right now is perfect to promote the town. He said he knows he will sell tons of postcards and we could all make money. Jenny and I eagerly agreed. He got us to stand with our hands on our hips and smile big. He took out a disposable camera out of his back pocket and began snapping photos. He took about 10 photos in total from many angles. That's it. (laughs) Be pissed. (laughs) I remember (laughs) rapid fire, baby. (laughs) I remember feeling a little uneasy and he said we should probably go because we needed to be home soon. He said he would get in touch with our principal on the first day of school to give us some money from our postcard sales. We foolishly confirmed and we went to the local elementary school, though it was the only elementary school in town, so it wouldn't be hard to figure out. Neither Jenny or I remember to this day giving him our names. This is an important detail for later. Jenny and I talked about becoming famous on the way home. I told Jenny that I wondered why he didn't have a professional camera. She said that she wondered that too, but we agreed cameras are expensive, so maybe he just didn't have a nice one in case it rained. That evening at supper, I told my parents about my potential newfound fame. They were horrified and got on the phone with Jenny's parents. The two sets of parents called the police and gave statements. Police sort of downplayed it and said it was unusual, but nothing criminal had happened. My parents had a long talk to me about safety, as did Jenny's parents with her. How old were they again? They were um, 11 and 12. Okay. The following spring, Jenny and I were hanging out together, this time a little older and a little wiser. <laughs> 13. <laughs> Sorry. And more, and a lot more cautious. We were walking along a quiet side of the street, just talking about music and TV and shows. A minivan approached us and slowed down. Stranger danger. Mm-mm. A friendly looking woman asked us if we knew where Smith's Road was. We told her she needed to drive down for less than a minute, and it's the first right-hand turn. She said she was having difficulty finding it, and would we mind hopping in and showing her? No. This is like rule number one. Yeah. Stranger, danger, and a minivan, too. Of course. Oh, my God. Right. It couldn't be like a Jetta. (laughs) (laughs) In that case, all bets are off. Get in. (laughs) Get in, loser. All right. I instantly told her no. Jenny also declined. Then the woman said it was okay because she knows who we are. She called us both by our first names 
and said she saw us on a postcard. No. Nope. Whoa. Remember, they didn't give him his name give him their names by now we were both freaked out we were on a stretch of the road that had no houses the nearest one was about 100 meters away and it wasn't common for people to have cell phones back then so neither jenny or i had one the woman continued to ask us to get in her minivan jenny who was normally super chatty was staring into the vehicle intensely her body language was stiff and i could tell she was scared suddenly and seemingly out of nowhere jenny screamed run I didn't know what was happening, but I ran and followed Jenny. We ran off the road and through a field and into a yard into another street over. I recognized the yard and the house as belonging to a school teacher. We pounded on her door and she answered. We told her what happened. And then Jenny said something I will never forget. She said she saw the photographer man from last summer crouching down in the very back row of the seats. She said she knew something bad was going of what to happen. Seats? Of the car. The van. The van. He was hiding in the back seat of the van. Oh, Oh my God. Holy. This feels like Lovely Bones. I've never seen that that either. Is that a show? It's a movie. Ooh. God, you you gotta write all these down for me. Police and our parents were called. We gave statements and a vehicle description as well as descriptions of the man and woman. Unfortunately, the police were never able to locate them. This was a year later? Mm Mm-hmm. Jesus. Jenny and I never saw them again. We had some serious trust issues with strangers after those encounters, and I had nightmares of being kidnapped into early adulthood. Always make sure to teach your children that strangers are not safe, no matter how nice they are. Yeah. My my situation could have had a much more unfortunate outcome if things had gone even slightly different. Those are two people I sincerely hope to never meet again. Wow. That's terrifying. Oh, I, yeah, it's so important to talk to your kids from the time they are little. Don't talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. Don't get in cars with strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. I just, it's like my neighborhood felt so safe. Like my parents rarely knew where I was in the summertime. I was just all around the neighborhood. I was nine biking all over town. Yeah. And it's so crazy to think. Oh, God, I I just would be so scared to be a parent. You know, you want to, like, let your children Mm -hmm. just go play outside and run around back to neighbors to neighbors. But that you like you have to be really careful who you trust your kids with nowadays. Like not only the stranger dangers, but like a lot of like essay is committed by people you typically know. Mm -hmm. It's like my brother and his wife do not let anyone really watch their kids it's like my grandma my mom and her parents Mm -hmm. like that's who babysits because they're they're so protective and it's it's scary it's so scary and like how do you teach your kid like if someone's offering a puppy in a van Mm -hmm. they might even get you alejandro (laughs) you literally (laughs) read no you read my mind you read so i was just going to say that's so funny you say that is like obviously teach this to your children at a young age But also, I think some adults need to hear this, like, especially in today's world where things are so like, as you're talking about it, I'm like, we literally have strangers deliver us food all the time. We have strangers pick us up in Ubers all the time. Yeah. People are constantly learning where we live, where we are, you know, we pay like complete virtual strangers. And I understand like companies like Uber and Postmates all at, I, w- I would assume have like a system of checks of like verification and background and all of that. And yeah. I mean, there's a great. class action lawsuit going on right now for drivers. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Heinous crimes. Wow. Right. I mean, anyone can do it, right? It just, and well, you can have a clean track record today and it, it just takes one crime tomorrow. Yeah. I think I might've told this before on the podcast, but I um, knew a girl in college who she was drinking, drinking a lot and got in a cab had lost her wallet and the uh, cab driver was like, you need to suck my dick. Yeah. And, and she was, what? Yeah. She was, and she was really scared. I, I can't remember exactly, but I think she even like might've done it because she was so scared because he was like grabbing her and was just like, I'm going to like call the police. Mm-hmm. Like, and she was only like 18 or something, mm-hmm. you know? And like, just, yeah, didn't. what do you do? But yeah, what do um, you do? What do you yeah. That's terrifying. It's so terrifying. No, it really is. Like, adults need to hear this one too. I think that sometimes 
we get too comfortable, especially if we've been drinking, like there's, yeah. you just put yourself in a bad situation or sometimes you don't put yourself in a bad situation. You're just, shout, just, you're just in a such situation. When I was shopping at home goods, the, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I told yeah. you that story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like such, so crazy. But like this happened, like I, there was, sometimes I just, maybe it's like the Minnesota and me in the Midwest, like where I try to be really nice and polite to people, but almost to a fault yeah. where like I was walking home one time back when we lived together and someone like started chatting me up and being like, oh, you know, where like, are you just on a walk? And then oh. I just board vomit and I'm like, oh, I live right here. Yeah. Now they know oh, where I live. Man. And they're like, yeah. are you from here? And I'm like, oh no, I'm from Minnesota. Oh, how old are you? Did, like I... You just suddenly like uncomfortably I've, overshare because you're uh, anxious. Not like, even like oversharing. I'm just like answering his questions without thinking about the fact that he's like able to discern my whole livelihood based on three important facts, where I live, where I'm from, and what my first name is. Yeah. You know, and then he sees me get into my car, sees my car, sees my license plate. So it's just like, and in that moment, it's so innocent. But I looked back and I'm like, that is really, really foolish to give that much information to somebody that I don't know. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes you just want to be nice, but it can be to a fault. And like, even these girls, right? Like he took advantage on, he played to like the fact that every woman wants to be flattered and like told that they're beautiful, told that they could be a model. Right. And so he took advantage of that. It's super sick. I, this has me thinking like about this stuff, like I've done in my life too. And I think about the time it was your birthday. We were up at like Malibu farms for Rose day. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, yeah. None of us had service. Yeah. We couldn't get Ubers. We were literally stranded an yeah. hour and 20 minutes away from our homes. Yeah. And we met these two nice um, guys and we were like, Hey, like, would you, could you give us a ride back? Mm-hmm. We hopped in a Jeep with two complete strangers. Yeah. Oh. And they gave us yeah, a ride. I that. They gave yeah. us a ride to West Hollywood. I still follow him on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, weren't they, were they the two gay guys yeah. that were fabulous? Yes. Oh my God. I don't remember them. But oh. you just don't know how that could have ended up. Like, yeah, they no, could have been like true. on the DL, I don't know, working with some yeah. someone and then yeah. like dropped us off and been like, bye bitches. Like, oh yeah. I used to hitchhike when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> like, because it was so fucking cold to all my Minnesota people, all the people that go to the U of M. Where did you hitchhike? Like to a party when I was on campus. You would just hold your thumb out on the street? Yes. You would like hell a cab like the way you would in New York. Yeah. And but they to would, people, not and they cabs. Would, and they would stop all the time because I was so damn cold. And because I like- We I, didn't really have Uber. Not until like no, later. We didn't, in yeah. college. No, I, no, we'd have to call we have to cabs. write down the cab yeah. I literally, I literally have my guy. His name is Steve, and I still get snaps from him like every once yeah. in a while. He would always be like, "Hey, Steve, need a ride to Plums tonight yeah. or Tiffs? Yeah, you had to go. have a taxi driver. You had yeah. like your own driver. Your taxi. He was a taxi driver, yeah. but then he would do it I, regularly. I remember I hailed like basically it was a party that was in I forget what's that one area that's super far away and it's kind of sketchy Como yeah it was was in Como so it was pretty far away and then back then like no one wanted to bring a jacket because they just knew they would lose it or it would get stolen yeah Yeah. so we would just like tough it out and we'd be like here's our like alcohol coat built different literally and then and then we would just trudge through like negative degree it was just so unsafe in so many ways but um (laughs) and then I just remember I we were getting so frustrated because we were getting turned around with the directions and finally I was like fuck it you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna hitchhike that's and insane. my friends that's that I was so with were insane. like I don't I like I'm, that's not that's probably not a good idea and then this guy stops and he looks like a really nice like dad and he was like you really shouldn't be hitchhiking and I was like I know but it's so cold and he's like okay where are you guys going and so Holy shit he brings us to the party and then he goes um with this house and I was like yeah and he goes I just dropped my son off here no <laughs> oh. and then I was like who's your son and I won't say his name but it's someone that we know and oh was, my god yeah. wow, and funny. uh and then it was just so funny because I was like don't tell your son because I was I thought it was embarrassing and then we get in there and I see everybody and they're like hey Lauren how's it going I was like so and so's dad drove us to the party, <laughs> and they're like, "Wait, oh what?" My God! And he's like, "You met my dad." <laughs> Moral of the story: Don't hitchhike. Don't hitchhike. Yeah, don't hitchhike. Like, don't hitchhike. It's Thankfully, just they not have Ubers it. now, though, so it's so much yeah. easier. They don't know the struggle, you yeah. guys. College kids these days, no, you guys don't know what it's like. We had to literally, first of all, you had to 
find a taxi that was trustworthy. Sometimes you always had to have cash on you. It was always cash. And then it was like survival of the fittest. Because Venmo, everybody's Venmo calling didn't the exist same, either. Yeah, everyone's calling the same 10 taxi drivers. Oh, Steve had a roster. Yeah, roster. I was higher on it for yeah. pickup. <laughs> But like he was like, he would always be like, hey, I'm dropping mine. I'll be right there. Right. And you'd get like, okay, they'll be there in 30, 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Look out for them. Yeah. Because yeah. they'll yes. leave if you're not ready. Yeah. yeah. You had to like set a timer and be like, okay, I, someone stand by the door. Do you kind of miss it? Yes. I, all the time. I kind of miss that no. simplicity. Yes, I do. No. Of course I do. How is that simple? It was like life. <laughs> Everything's just too like, accessible now. I feel like I, I would love to roll the tape. Same. I, I thought calling a taxi was so annoying. Oh, I I, like, I can't button. even imagine going back to that. Like, there's there's other things, simple things, you know, like before Facebook and everything, that simpler times. But the Uber taxi thing, I'm very Bring happy. Bring it back. <laughs> I, want, I want a ride. I want a ride from someone who can't rate me. Yeah. And I'm nice. Why do you think taxi I drivers tip. are, like, s- safe? I think they're nicer than what my Uber drivers are rating me lately. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that what, was did, a what did you really do? Really ugly laugh. Oh my god. Nothing. Who, did, who hurt you? What did you I do? I think they. The only time I've been taking Ubers is to the airport. You got a I, bad rating lately, didn't you? What'd you do? No, my rating just overall is like it's tanking. Can we just stop how funny that is? Four point seven five. They're nicer than what my she's Uber just mad because she literally wants taxis to come back because someone didn't give her a good rating. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, yellow cab. I'm I'm ready for you. <laughs> Wait, tell us what'd you do and why'd you get nothing. A bad rating? No, oh. literally nothing. I think my problem is that usually when. I do go out. My score has been kind of low for a while. Share it. But usually when I... It's 4.75 right now. Mm. It's low. Mine's... I mean, mine's 4.8. Yeah, it's... But also... Okay, the other thing though is that... No, the other thing though is that... 4.96. It is 4.9. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing though is that... So for example, traveling, there's a lot of places that you can use Uber. Like most of the places I've gone, you can still use Uber. And um, in South Africa, for example... Uh, my friend was telling me that everybody, because he had been there for like three months, and he was like, everybody that I'm friends with on this trip, all of their like n- no nomads, they all of their scores gone went down significantly because he was like, here it's way more like I'll give you a five star if you really mm-hmm. were mm-hmm. amazing. That's it's, me, you know. Whereas like now it's just I'm like. Good. No, but I'm saying with with us, it's just kind of like, oh, we'll give you a five star unless you piss me off. You know, it's unless more you're of kind driving of like the, unsafe. Like if you're yeah. not, if you're driving unsafe to where I'm questioning if I'm going to get there, it's five stars. Yeah. Like, well, he he was telling me that they're not like that. And who? I mean, if you live in South Africa and this is incorrect, in, let me know. But yeah, he was telling me that everybody that w- they were nomads visiting, that they all, all of their scores dropped significantly since being yeah. there. And it's just, they just operate differently. It's just like, it's like to them, they're like, oh yeah, three star, it was fine. And I'll give Damn. you a five star if you were like really great. I'm not but, in there. So yeah, I know, right? And then- Can't and then, take the risk. And then in Argentina, um, if you ever use uh, Uber there, they- hate when you slam their doors they will not give you a good rating if you slam their doors too hard it's the most annoying thing in the world and uh, and i hate when people slam my car door no no but but i'm like okay fucking hulk no i'm telling you i think you'll probably be in argentina because you're gonna be bopping around i don't know if i'm gonna go to argentina Mm. well if you do it's their doors it's lightweight there's something different it doesn't cushion the same way yeah is here and I, I don't know what it is and so it's like you you think you're doing it really softly and then it you have to do it even softer mm. so they'll Damn. give you really bad scores if you accidentally uh shut the door too hard so yeah i my 4.8 i don't think makes me a shitty person alhandra i never said that it did and but thank god like thank god they don't have uber and mykonos because i'm telling you right now i would have tanked my score <laughs> So what only you do donkeys there. Stays yeah. in Mykonos. What happens in Mykonos stays in Mykonos. <laughs> no, it's what it's not. Honestly, I didn't do anything in Mykonos. It's just like everybody. So in Mykonos, they don't have Uber. They don't have Lyft. Mm-hmm. It's all taxis. It honestly felt like I was back in in college nice. with no whatever. Yeah. The problem though is that it's like honestly, this is like made as is going to sound so first world. I understand. It's a privilege to be able to travel. I get it, but like. It was like survival of the fittest. Oh yeah, because there were got thirty money? taxis on the entire Show island. Me the money during the spike of tourism 
on the Mykonos Island. Okay. I think you and Brian were talking about that, right? It was, I don't know if we were. Okay. Were well, we? Brian was talking about it with somebody, it's but he was so saying, hard. Yeah. So you like, ha- literally, I'd have to be like, hey, drop me. I, I need to ride to Scorpios at like 10 p.m. And then I need you to pick me up at like, you'd have to like tell them. And then that sucks because you, can, you can't plan your night. You'd be like, I don't know. What if I have fun? What if I don't have fun? Yeah. Damn. And you like couldn't do anything about it. You just had to like mm. wait it out. I got literally like stranded at a place for like two hours. Oh no. Yeah, that it sounds like just, me at Coachella. Honestly, it, feel, it, saw, it was very festival outside. vibes. Yeah, I sat wait, outside what, for hours. Which could, which, when? The year you went with, um, the we, same year. We were there both years though. Yeah, the second year. Second year. Okay. Ubers like didn't exist. I walked, I walked. Uh, they didn't have Ubers there. No, because oh, they, they, they couldn't did. come on it the was property. So, no, it's, it's just, just so it hard. can just get. Yeah, it, it was like they the do Games. and they don't. It, it's. Did you guys see Burning Man? Yeah, insane. The flooded stuff. Insane. We're sounding like such influencers right now. We're talking about Coachella, <laughs> Mykonos. Did we have any comments on this story? Yeah, we'll bring it back. We'll I was bring trying. It back. Yeah, I, know, I was I trying saw, to go I saw there. your little eyes moving. Did you see me? Yeah, yeah, I was trying to scan. Um, I was trying not to. Okay, anyway. Top, I mean, they're, I'm going to be really honest. These comments don't do it for me. They're very lukewarm, but I will give the people what they want. Yeah, let's hear it. The top comment is, geez, this one is terrifying. Reading these, it's a wonder we made it through the 90s and early aughts. I don't know what they're trying to say there. Yeah. Is that a word? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to add this one to my already mile-long list for my young child. Seriously. And then OP said, it's just one of those situations you would never expect to happen as if parenting didn't already have enough worries. I'm going to kick back and say that's actually not a situation I would never expect to happen. I feel like kidnapping white vans, stranger danger is like something yeah. that's very talked about. I feel like if somebody in, in a room like with nobody around, if a stranger walks up to you and pulls out like a disposable camera and asks to take pictures of you. I know we live in like a kind of artsy time now where that's like a thing yeah but if i'm alone and i'm 11 with my also minor like two minors yeah i feel like you should politely decline i don't think a stranger should just have photographs of you just i looking back i probably oh, would have gone along with it oh yeah 100 percent. i have zero question photos taken of you oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean me and my mm-hmm. friends we used to i just found these pictures the other day because i was packing up my room in duluth but me and my friends would take disposable cameras to the mall and like go in JC Penney's and try on a bunch of clothes and have like fashion show That's and pictures. That's really cute. Yeah. So I just found all those. I'm like, some stranger would have came up to me during that time and been like, you guys, sh- you could be Stunning. models for Abercrombie Kids. I, I would have fell for it like Abercrombie that. Abercrombie Kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I Hollister, really, let's go. I didn't like think about that until just now of how the concerning aspect of him having pictures of them. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. And like why he had pictures of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like another thing so too scary. is like be careful about who you let take take photos of you. Okay, so somebody said, "Wow, this is terrifying." It made me think of Rodney Alcala. If you don't know who he is, please look him up. I wonder how many psychos out there use the same ruse. Thank goodness you guys. Thank goodness you girls got away. So, so who is it? Do we all know? Do we know who he is? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, Rodney James Alcala was an American serial killer and sex offender oh who oh. was sen- sentenced to death in California for five murders committed between 1977 and 1979. So let's see. What did Why he- do I feel like I've heard him on Crime Junkies? Oh, he was called the Dating Game Killer. Oh my God, yes. I heard the crime junkie on him. Oh, there is? I want to yeah. go find it. He went on a dating show mm-hmm. in LA mm-hmm. and was like a contestant. And so they have clips of him being like, okay, number five, how He's would you take number me? number one. Yeah. And he was a successful photographer. Yep. Wow. And that's how they started pinpointing him to victims because they found hundreds and hundreds of photos and then would match them with bodies that had turned up. Whoa. It was really bad. He was really, yeah, that's... Yeah. That is scary. I can't listen to stuff like that. Yeah. So that's basically what they this story reminded them. It of, does. Which it, it really does. does. Yeah. Um, which it people are like, oh, was it him? But no, because he was active in the 70s and this took place in the 90s. 90s. He was already in jail at this point. Wow. Yeah. Interesting though, right? Crazy. And he actually won the dating game. Fact check me on that, but according to somebody. Oh my God. Yeah. Most of the comments are just saying that this is terrifying. Yeah. Rightfully uh, so. Yeah. You'll probably never see him again. I feel like that's something on our past, like scary stories thing. We had a lot of people write in and be like, I was like attempted, kidnapped almost. Really? Yeah. Well, a lot of people, whenever I shared that instance at Home Goods, which was so shocking to me because I thought that you were, 
I thought you might just cut it out because I, I told you in the beginning that I was just stressed out because yeah, of what happened. No, it was, it was very, one of those moments of just catching up with you. I didn't very know if you... scary. And you even put in the bio, you're like, if you want to skip Lauren's story, go to this timestamp. <laughs> it was long. You know, but, but it's then important. It was, it it's was important the biggest thing. Address. Everybody was sharing all of their stories. So many people were reaching out with like the kindest words to me and then yeah. sharing their own stories. So it is an it is an important I think um, more people need to hear it. Like sex trafficking can look so different in so many different ways. And it's like, I I feel bad sometimes that I'm like brushing people off. Like, no, leave me alone. I don't have time. I don't have time to sign your protest. I don't have time to do this. Like, but at the same time, like, I don't know who I can trust. Yeah. And I would rather come off as rude mm -hmm. versus put myself in a position where I don't make it out of. Yeah. I saw, and, I need to take a page out of your book on that one. Yeah. I just don't. I, I, I feel bad, but I'm, I, I'd rather protect myself. I you genuinely don't know. don't know how to be. I can. I know how to be rude, like for sure. But like when somebody's being really kind to me, it's. I don't know why, but this like I That's can't. That's why they get do the it though. Switch That's to like why they do it. It's rude. A, it's a tactic because it is off putting. How do you be mean to someone who's being so kind? <laughs> right. To you? Yeah, I struggle with that. Yeah, crazy. So we're cutting back in here. We kind of went a little off topic, but essentially we just had like a little snippet of like protecting your information. If your address is posted online, you should definitely pay to have like a service take everything down, protect your privacy, be rude, don't be skeptic, like don't let people take advantage or scare you or make you feel uncomfortable. It's not worth it. Ready for the next one? Whatever the crime junkie thing says, stay stay rude, stay alive mm, or whatever. Yeah, something like that. Also, I just want to clarify something you said. I, you don't always have to have pay to have your stuff taken down. It is a it is protected somewhat under the Privacy Act, mm -hmm. so you can actually write to a lot of these places. You can do it yourself. It, yeah. yeah, and it's, what's crazy mm -hmm. is sometimes it's just a matter of they need in writing for you to ask for it to be taken down. Yeah. So it can be kind of easy, kind of. Sometimes it's not very time consuming. It can be time consuming, but yeah. it's worth it. So oh, that's I'm the like the services you pay for. Like I've seen some that are like twenty five bucks. Okay, that's nice. And I'm just like, it's better than me writing letters. But yeah. regardless of how you do it, you should definitely do it. Yeah, that's like the modern day, like back, you know, the original Reddit stories about the 90s and they talked about how they don't have cell phones and didn't have social media. And it's like in a way that was safer. Yeah. But with all of these great technologies, there presents all these new privacy inform or privacy issues being stalked. For sure. Cyber stalked, all that good stuff. Oh, my God. Scary, okay. Scary. Moving along. One last one and then we are done with Spooky Light Edition. Cool. This one is 17 hours old. It is titled, I'm a skeptic, but now I'm sold. So I'm open to ideas, explanations, slash stories. Give me whatever you got, but this is crazy. So I recently started working as a 911 operator at a police department in Oklahoma. I love it. Tonight, one of my coworkers was talking to me about ghosts, and I told him I didn't really believe in them. And he said, quote, oh, you will. Damn. So later on in the night, it was about 3 a.m., the 911 phone rings. This is not a landline. It only answers and rings for 911. He says, quote, come get this phone. So I do. I answer the call. Immediately, I hear heavy breathing. I proceed to ask if they can hear me. Who is calling? And after 43 seconds, they hang up. He laughs and turns and points to the map. This phone number was a landline and plotted in the middle of an old base camp cemetery just outside of town. Nobody lives within five miles of this place. Mm. The mapping on 911 landlines is always within five inches of the caller. It's accurate. He then told me to redial the number. I did. The number is not available. He then proceeds to tell me this happens every night. The supervising officer came in and I asked him how long this has happened. He said every night for the last 23 years, that's how long he's been there. They used to send officers out, but it's gated and there's nobody there. Oh my what? God. Did you just say 23 years? Mm -hmm. Every night. Every night? For 23 years. That's how long that that supervisor had been there. Like who knows if it happened yeah. before. Yeah. Um, I want to know like the history. Like when was there a landline there? Yeah. This He goes on to say, this is real. I kid you not. I saw and heard this happen tonight and I'm in shock. 
No way a prank has gone on this long. No. No way a landline cord reaches five miles in length to even reach the cemetery. The calls change times tonight was at 3.07 a.m., but it ranges from midnight to 4 a.m. every single night. This is an abandoned POW burial ground, which POW is... war. Yeah. Wow. Any explanations? How crazy is that? There's like no explanation for that. There's none. Well, I mean, some people are like, <laughs> well, know, so, know, so we, well, we do have, we do have comments though. And the None. Top, well, <laughs> <laughs> instantly. The top comment is as a truly skeptical person, I would say you should check the call logs from several random dates in the past to see if this number or location shows up on those logs. If not, you might have been pranked by your new coworkers. Oh, but, oh, you know, uh, hmm. You never know. It's a good point. I thought that maybe it was an automated landline out there, but there's no landlines in the area. The newest burial is 1945, so there's no way it's underground or something. Landline on 911 means it is connected to a cable, <sighs> and the calls come at variable times, so it isn't automated. Trust me, I went through every single scenario I could come up with, and I assure you, based on the officer's response, he wasn't kidding. Damn. I just remembered I'm home alone this week. Same. I'm home alone tonight. Fuck. It's okay. That sucks. Yeah. It's, why? There's there's a few Wait. more comments from OP basically being like, it is definitely real. Um, the 911 map plots are accurate. Um, so I checked the call history and I kid you not, we recently got a new system. It only goes back two years, but every night, this address. 911 hang up every single night. And lastly, three, the officer that came in saw the look on my face and was like, what's up? And my coworker goes, she just learned about the Fort Reno calls. And he goes, oh, on 911? And he said, yep. And the officer goes, yeah, every night for over 23 years. And that's not even the scariest reports we get from out there. And this is a 6'4", 350 pound man. He's huge. And he was genuinely actually mortified of that place. Like he was not kidding. How much Did, would it take for you to get to sleep in that cemetery? Oh, it's a cemetery? Prisoners mm -hmm. of War Burial oh, Cemetery. Oh, da, da, da. You said 50K um, earlier you'd consider? Um, No, I would want more than 50K. Yeah, no, I would definitely want more than 50K because I know that that's going to fuck with me for at least a fucking year. So I don't want to take a job for 50K that's going to fuck with my mental health for an entire year. So in that aspect, it needs to be at least 100. 100. <laughs> that would take, it would take me probably 25 to sleep out there. 25K? Yeah. What about you? racks. That is an excellent question. I don't know. More than 25. Less, less than, than 100? 100? I don't know. <laughs> what if I'm like 75? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll meet you in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> take a deal. Um... No, I'm like probably. It's not getting taxed. Not no no, <laughs> no tax, tax no tax tax free no tax. Okay, um, probably a hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's one more comment I'm going to read, and this is the last one. I was listening to the police scanner for a city a couple of hours from us late at night. Like four times, the dispatcher had the same two officers respond to a call that was apparently from an older lady who had people banging on her windows and doors and shining lights around and just harassing her. Cops go out there, say the place looks empty, no response. They make sure it's the right address, leave when they can't get a response. Like 20 minutes later, dispatch is back on with them. Lady said she could hear them, but couldn't get to the door fast enough. So they go back, wait longer, nothing. The last time they were there, it was for like 45 minutes. And it sounded like they were giving the exterior of the house and yard a really good looking over, but they didn't find anything. At some point, dispatch did some digging and got a hold of the daughter of the woman who used to live there. I think the mom had been moved to a nursing home. She might have been dead since this was a while ago, but either way, she wasn't living there anymore and it was supposed to be empty. And they were getting calls from that house? The last time they left, the sun was rising, and I thought, that's the end of it. There weren't any more calls after that. <gasps> Full body chills. Wait, so they were getting calls and talking to this woman? Mm -hmm. Full-fledged ghost. And then the daughter said that she used to live there, but doesn't anymore? No, nope. She's in a nursing home now. Nursing home or dead, which maybe... How, why don't they know? Because if they talk to the daughter, wouldn't she have 
let them know. Yeah. This is someone listening to a police dispatcher. So could be missing some of the inspo. Uh, oh, I almost inspo. said inspo. <laughs> yeah. Information. What? What? <laughs> Can you tell how fried She's I am? She's an influencer, In- guys. <laughs> inspo no i'm running on four hours of sleep after Mm -hmm. getting last night's uh, episode with justin up and i've done four episodes this week Mm -hmm. all hondras had terrible cramps you've done two episodes this week lauren's done two episodes this week it has been a A marathon a marathon but we're here we're doing it for you and that was spooky Light edition. Yay, that wasn't bad. No. No, you'll sleep fine. Yeah. Um, I told I you you can handle it. Really? No. You'll be okay. No, it's that phone one that's going to fuck me up. The phone one? Mm-hmm. The last one? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, you can call me. Just call I'm going to bed now. Okay. Good night. I got some new sleep gummies that I'm going to try tonight. There you go. after last night's incident. I have so many extra ones I can pass your way to. Damn. So many. I was going to try this new brand. Mm. You know, the best part about, so the worst part about when I get scared at night is whenever I can't sleep. And so I'm the only one awake. And then everybody else, you know, like if I were to text you, you're sleeping, you're sleeping. Well, no, like, I'm sure a shit be up to Text me. I'm usually but like, awake. But no, it's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's when everybody that I was in contact with falls asleep yeah, and I'm home alone. Worst. And then I start here and I can't fall asleep. And then I start hearing noises and like random creaks or like stuff like that. And that's when I get really freaked out. And you know what? Like, did you hear the creak in your headphone? Just as you said, creak. No. Um, I mean, it's been creaking the whole time, so. <laughs> Say but, creak again. <laughs> creak, 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 creak. <laughs> but, but uh, no, the best life hack for that is get yourself an Anastasia who lives on the other side of the world because she will Russia. be up and then, well, she actually moved, but oh, um, yeah. Oh, where is she at now? Um, Armenia. Okay, okay. Yeah. There you go, Anastasia. But, um. But anyway, that was like so... Anastasia is a fellow listener that Lauren befriended on Instagram for those that might not know. Yeah, from the very start, too. She reached out to me like like kind of in the she's beginning. A, she's no G. Real and one. And she was just hilarious right away. So we've just kept a, a friendship ever since. That's a good way to do um, it. Yeah. I was up until uh, 5 a.m. So, you, you know, you can always text me. I kind of sleep for a little bit and then I wake up and I try to take naps, but... I'll try you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 there. <laughs> you know how shitty spooky season is as a single woman? It's so shitty. Why? I think it was just great. You don't no. have to go to scary movies with someone. What do you mean? You have no one to watch spooky cuddly movies with? What do you want to watch? I'll watch it with you. Um, the Conjuring. <laughs> You actually want to watch that? No, 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 no. Yeah, so like, okay, let's talk more Hocus Pocus. No, but then it's like all scary shit, and then you have to like go home and like be scared alone. Yeah. That's That's shitty. That's what I always say. Like, I'm not afraid of scary stuff in the moment. It's, it's the later. Aftermath. I yeah. just like yeah. during your story, it it started to dawn on me that I'm going to have to go home alone. Mm-hmm. It just hit me. In sleep alone yeah, in no. my old house no. this, that has tons of creeks. This just hit me. And I'm like, oh, my is blue there? God, no. Mm. Oh, you don't even have a dog. Nothing. You want to just, you can come over to my house. No, I have to so much. It's going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. Everyone listening is going to be okay. I hope I didn't mess you up too much with the Sergei Ponomarenko time traveler story. I thought that, that would be just fun. just hurt my feelings. But you wish it was real though, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, really a, it was a fun episode. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I like stories like that. It was a good time. Yeah. But uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Head over to Patreon for some fun bonus content this month. Other than that, any notes? I can't think of something clever to say right now. So no. Happy fall. Happy fall. That was super clever. Happy pumpkin spice latte season. (laughs) Love that one. There you go. There you go. (laughs) That's original, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.